Hallelujah. I love God. I do, man. I love praising God. I love worshiping. I found now something about worshiping and praising God. It's the return is great. There's a purging, there's a washing, there's a cleansing. When you can really get into that unique place where you can really praise God, and glorify Him, and put your whole mind and everything on Him, it changes your life. Amen? It changes your life. Amen. So I like that it. it washes you, it cleanses you, it purifies you. Amen. As you give it, He's giving something. As you give it, He's giving. He's giving, He's giving something. And whatever He gives, I want. Amen. Whatever God gives, I want. And I love hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is is a high praise. And I love, I love praising God. Can I tell you the truth? I, I love God. I, I appreciate being saved. I appreciate being chosen by God for salvation. To save my soul. Amen. I know sometimes we feel like we we did it. But it's all God. Everything that has been done is, is done by God. You know, even even the mind thought to get to want Jesus, to need Jesus, it's all done by. So there's no boasting. There's no self-glorification. There's no patting me on the back. It's just glorifying God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. God doesn't change. We change, but God doesn't. God doesn't stop being good. He's so good that he gave his only begotten son. The, 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 his finest moment for us is Jesus. Because what he did was he put everything on Jesus and he gave us a new star. Every day you get a brand new grace, a brand new mercy. Amen. And that is a good thing. Amen. I've, I'm still talking about the body of Christ. I'm learning that the body of Christ is, is important because the dependency on each other. You know, the communication that's necessary. But it needs to be in the body of Christ with believers who believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Amen. Amen. So I want to I want to wrestle with that. Um, the body of Christ again today. This is what God has given me. Uh, but I want to I want to do this. I want to do prayer and then I want to get right into this because I want to be able to finish it today. Amen. Well, not finish it, but I want to at least get this this connection part really going well. And then we'll talk about the administration and what we are. Because there's so much in the body. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's wholeness. Uh, there's, there's a newness in, in the body of Christ. It's, it's you know, it's, it's everything we need is in the body of Christ. That means something. It's not, it's not a cliche. Now, the, 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 the body of Christ are those who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Who have accepted Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Amen. It's not outside of that. I mean, you cannot make it outside of that. But everything we need, we're more dependent on each other. And that's I think that's our problem is that when we realize how dependent we are on each other and we begin to utilize it, then we're better. But when we get so religious, so spiritual that we don't even check each other and help each other, and talk to each other, then we're isolated and the enemy defeat us. Let me tell you something. You when you name the name of Jesus, you're in a serious war. And you need help. That's why God did it as the body of Christ. Amen. We need each other. We are really interdependent on each other. Like I was thinking, I was thinking about my arm. And then I knew it communicates with my shoulder a lot. My shoulder communicates with my chest a lot. I mean, I understand that my neck inter- inter- interacts with my head a lot. I understand. So we, but we need, we need each other. And sometimes in our society, that's hard to accept. That's hard to accept. And it's not necessarily the folk that's just in your house. Amen. You, you need, we need, you'll get stronger if you can. And then if somebody is not like, if you want them to be the arm and they ain't the arm, you got to find the arm. Because everybody ain't the arm. Amen. You, 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 you go to somebody and you be like, oh yeah, I know I can rest my, my shoulder on you. And they, they, it ain't the arm. God will show you. But we are, we are dependent upon each other more than you know, whether we do it or not. If we do it, yield to it, we don't suffer as much. But when we don't yield to it, we suffer more. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We bless you. We glorify you. We worship you.
Father God, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for saving our soul. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for you joining us. But most of all, Father God, as well, we thank you for the Holy Ghost indwelling us and teaching us who you are and who we are, helping us to begin again every day. Thank you, Father God, for what you've done. What a great work you've done in the salvation of our souls. And Father, we give you the honor, the glory, and we give you the praise. Father God, I decree that it is you coming forth through me for your word to go forth. And every ear will hear, every eye will see, and every heart will believe and receive. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hey. That's my friend right there. Y'all didn't see me giving that sound language. Did, did I say it out loud? Go with it. <laughs> Go, to, go with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It gets hot. It gets hot as the day go on, doesn't it? 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's go back there. And what I want to do is I want to start at verse 18, and then we're going to read. We're going to read some. Anybody like to read? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Amen. <laughs> sometimes I do. Sometimes. Now, now, I had the most joy reading when I was in my master's courses because it was so much work. Then I had to read. I had to read, and then and I began to write. And, I, and when you read, you can write. And so I had to write out, and I had to read. I had to write out. I had to read. But once you, it seems like when you get through with some of this stuff, like you get through with school, it ain't time to stop learning. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we're formal education, uh, but it's not time to stop learning. Verse 18 says this. I'm in the. I'm in the. Um, I'm in the King James version. Um, in this Bible. Um, I'm going to, I've got two here. I've got the King James and the Amplified, but I'm just going to do that. I'm going to translate with the King James, okay? Now, in verse 18, it reads this way. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. And if they, and, and, and then he goes on, he says this. Of course, he's, he's writing a whole letter, and we're coming in about half of that letter or less at the end, he had already talked about us being the body of Christ. And then he says that, you know, we, we are not we're not individual lives. We depend on each other. He talks about, you know, the, the eye being the eye and the ear and that we we need each other. and Everything is what it is. So now he says that in all of that, who has done that is God, is God. Verse 18 says that uh, it is God who has who has done that. But now has God set the members, every one of them in the body as it has pleased him. Then he gets back and he says, now, if they were all one member, where would the body be? Amen. But now are they many members yet, but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I what have no need of you. Now, when you're in the body of Christ, you really don't have a right to reject each other. Amen. The, the, the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much more. Those members of the body which seem to be more feeble. You know, you know the word feeble is troublesome. Amen. But they steal the body. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You ever call another believer troublesome? Start calling them feeble. They're a little feeble. <laughs> he said, <laughs> no, much more. Those members of the body which are which seem to be more feeble. That's not as strong, a little bit weaker. Um, are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable. Watch this. See, sometimes people have what's called, we call it low self-esteem. Amen. But sometimes sin can make you feel like you're just wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't kind of say, you know, sin can, sin can convict you. I mean, sometimes sin can make you feel like you're just like wrong. I know how it makes you feel. And anybody else know? I mean, it's just, so, so he's talking about honorable, but sometimes, now some people never get convicted. I don't know how in the world you had the Holy Ghost and don't get convicted of sin. I don't get it. Like I get convicted. I don't care what I do, I still get convicted. Amen. If I choose to tell a sophisticated lie. Anybody? 
<laughs> you know, a sophisticated lie is a sophisticated lie. It's acting like you didn't know you lied. Or you didn't mean to lie. <laughs> Some believers lie and mean it. How many? <laughs> it's based on the situation. We have to be honest with each other. And God knows that as he's given us these scriptures, right? Um, um, and so some, some believers don't show no signs of saved, but it don't mean they're not saved. Remember, they didn't save themselves and the workings of their salvation is not in their hands. It's just they have not developed and grown and matured. You should never tell a person they're not saved if they name the name of Jesus. You shouldn't walk around. I don't care who it is, how close they are to you. You should never say to them, you ain't saved. Because you're really judging them and condemning yourself. The Bible doesn't say that. Neither does God say that. He says those who, 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 who think to be. He said think to be less honorable upon these. What should we do? Restore more abundant honor. This is the body now. And we need to get this. Amen. In our uncomely parts, uncomely, don't don't look, don't seem like it, don't seem like they fit in, weird, strange, have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no needs, that's scripture, have no needs. But God has tempered the body together being a heaven given more abundant honor to the part which lacks. Right? He says the comely parts have no need. He said, but God has given more abundant. What God has done, he's tempered the body to work together. The power of the believer is unity. Any isolated believer suffers tremendously. Now, when we talk about unity, I got it. I got it. I want to finish that. We're not talking about misusing other people for their resources. That's not what it's about. What we're talking about, when God talks about this body, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. So, when he says, here's a, here's a scripture I'm using this as an example. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse so there'll be, there will be meat in my house. He said, prove me that with the, said the Lord, if I would not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. Now, remember, the blessing that comes from God is a spiritual blessing. So when you talk about the body of Christ, your most, your most power comes when you've got somebody that can pray for you. Not give you their financial resources because sometimes you need prayer so you can get your own. Because if you keep going to them, they're going to run out and you're going to be broken, they're going to be broken. Your only, a family is only as strong as its weakest link. So, so when, we, when, we, when we talk about the body of Christ, we're talking about getting what God has for us to have from one another. Where should we get love? Jesus said we should get love. Now, people don't understand that. I would call Dick and Trice, but I know he don't want to talk to me. How do you know? He, he's, he's your brother in Christ. Call him and see. And if he tired that day, call Sister Trice. A mother Trice. Call somebody. See, what you do is you call. Listen to me. See, we 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 gotta you you we suffering for no reason. And I don't know, I can't fix this. But I can give you what God is saying in this season. We are the body of Christ. The power of God is invested in us as a unit. Where there are two or more gathered together in the name of Jesus, he's in the midst. He's in the midst. A lot of people suffer because I'm expecting the wrong thing out of my body. I'm expecting the wrong thing out of my body. The most powerful thing I can get from the body that I'm in 
is what God has put in it for me to have. In the body is faith. Sometimes I can call Dick and Denar and I can say, Dick, I'm going through something. It seems like I can't even get out of it. I, I've been sinning so hard the last three days. I don't expect him to tell y'all. I expect for Dick and Denard to put his faith on that thing and say, you delivered in the name of Jesus. I want him to love me enough to say, I knew you were. You had a little something, something in you. I could tell from your sermons. <laughs> we, we, we send each other the hell. I remember when I hung out with my buddies in the street, we are fighting to go get us a bottle. Stay together through the bottle. <laughs> we should stay together through the blood of Jesus. Come on. Come on. When we're going through something, we're so private. We don't want to tell nobody. Well, you stay in it. Some people have been going through some stuff for years, asking God for deliverance, but you won't follow the plan of God. Pray ye one for another. Confess your faults one to another in the body of Christ. You can't tell the believer you need a sinner, you can tell. You don't. The sinner, sinner, sinner can't help you. They ain't in the body. See, God works through his own divine order. Wish somebody could hear this guy. So you got to come out of what you think ain't good. If, if anything happens to me or happens to my wife, I'm going to say, put this on the prayer line. It's not about your business. I have people tell me, say, we know we don't want nobody to know our business. I say, we want to say, what's that? And you call me for it. Because I'm telling the whole congregation that you need help. I can't do it by myself. I need everybody praying at the same time so we can see victory in the house. Amen. Amen. You, we, that's what he's talking about in this. So he's talking about, he said, he said, look, he said, he said, I didn't make you by yourself. You are body. I placed you in. I've connected you. So if I take my arm and I do like this and I, I'm going to lift the speaker. What am I doing? I'm making it hard on myself. I might not be able to lift it. It's a lot of things you can't lift because you won't use your other. Um, a lot of things you can't get off of you because you won't use your other heart, your other. Because sometimes it seems like the way the body works is that God has got it so complex that, that your heart can be better than my heart and it can strengthen mine. I could be downtrodden, God forbid. I could be going through something. And then I could call you and you could be like, hey, how you doing? Lord have mercy, I'm glad to hear from you. you know, I was just thinking about you. All of a sudden I'm grinning and what? What you thinking? What you what you thinking about me? Thought about how much I love you. I thank God for you. You're so precious to me. The Bible says edify one another. Lift each other up. Encourage one another. Sin stops that. If I'm in sin with you, we ain't going to edify each other. Eventually we're going to cuss each other out. Sin will make you act like sin. Like Sin is flesh. Flesh show does what it do and spirit does what it do. The body of Christ is so unique and so powerful that if we get it, we got something. Why be saved, drawn by God to Jesus Christ, accept Jesus Christ and not benefit? No, no, no. We must benefit, but the biggest benefit is to love one another and realize I need you. I, I need, I need, I need your, sometimes, do you know, do you know, uh, uh, a minister fuller could be the carrier of faith. See, people got different gifts. Different gifts. There have been some times that we've had some challenges and, and we'll put the prayer out there and, and, and the results are tremendous. Why? Because somebody in the group was positioned and had in them the gift of prayer, the gift of faith. The gift. See, see, the Holy Spirit can bring it all through us, but some folk is in them because God did that. 
He put every piece in the body of Christ. That's why we need each other to walk this walk and live in victory. God was not lying when he said, I wish above all things that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. The soul prospers when I realize that I'm not in this by myself. That's when it prospers. That's when, that's, when, that's when it prospers. See, this, this is what we like to do is it'll, it, you, you, you'll say, well, I know. I know. Elder Robeson got a lot of money. I know they talk about him. He talks about, it, you know. <laughs> Let me call. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, I love you, man. Hey, hey but this, so I'm going to call him up. Listen. Because I, I need some here. I need a little something. Hear me? Hey, Elder, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Elder, I, the Lord led me to call you. Told me to ask you for some money. I'm not even going to play with it. Hey, Elder, told me to ask you for some money. What you need? How much can you give me, Elder? <laughs> <laughs> Elder say, well, the Lord hadn't told me anything. <laughs> You need a spirit of discernment. God ain't tell you. See, see, if you call me and say God told you to tell me something, the first thing I'm going to do is check with God. There have been times that Lisa and I have wanted to help people. And God will say no because he's raising them up. He'll say, don't, don't get in my way. That's not what they need. Pray for them. See, sometimes you want, to, want everybody to like it. I got it. I know. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, because we're the body of Christ. You need to check with him because it all belongs to him. And can he entrust you as a steward with it? It ain't just your tithe. It's not just your offering. But it's everyday living. Can he trust you as a steward with your car? Can he trust you as a steward with your house? Can he? I remember when we, when we, when we lived over on uh, Crystal River in Riverdale. We, had, we, we started the church in the house. We gave God the house this year. Pastor Mac brought that church over there. We had the anniversary in the house. We were all everywhere. I said, he said, I'm, are we going to have the first anniversary in that right there where you are, son? I said, Pastor, you know we're in the house. <laughs> like he didn't know, right? He said, we coming. I said, yes, sir. And he came. Well, we got out of that house into another house right here on, on Shelly Court. Then we had a choir rehearsal in that house. If somebody can hear me. Then we got out of that house and we moved to another house. We, we moved. The thing is this, do you know, when you give God what's his and let him have it, let him use it like he want to, you don't get stuck where you don't need to be. God is a God of increase, but you have to do it as the body of Christ. You can't get it, but it's some things you might not understand. Somebody else might understand. You might have to call them up and say, you know what, I'm wrestling with something. Do you know, do you know sometimes... You can get out of your sin, whether it's hate, bitterness, resentment, rebellion, by telling somebody else, you know what, I'm going through something. And I don't even know how I feel this way. And, you know, I love Pastor. I mean, I, I just love him, but I just don't like him right now. <laughs> Every time he get in that pulpit, he'd be talking right to me. That's after he didn't talk to me on the side. <laughs> A lot of people feel that way. I don't give a listen. <laughs> God gonna talk to you regardless. If I talk to you on Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, He gonna tell you the exact same thing. We ain't buddies when I get up in here. This is real. You don't tell me. You'll still find out He knows. It's a waste of time to have all against folk that you love. What it does is it brings a schism. A schism is division. And then you're, see, see, I'm, you could be greater than who you, who you are, but somebody needs to pray for you. And if you isolate it and by yourself, nobody can get to you. If your, if your agenda is off kilter, your agenda, you going to somebody as though they could elevate you and promote you. 
No, no, you're going to somebody so you can pray and get in the place of elevation that God has already done. The guys are, see, a lot of times we're stuck in these places of ill productivity because we don't realize that God has already done something, but what's holding us down is weight. Sin is heavy. Unrepentant sin is heavy for a believer. Do, 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 do you ever read the scriptures where the Bible said that Jesus would just appear in a room? He had on this, he had on this body, and now all of a sudden they'd be in a room and he just appear in the room. After he got up out of the grave, he just appeared. A believer is lightweight. All the stuff you're carrying is not of God. Sometimes you can't blame God. You got to blame yourself. See, it ain't God's fault that I made a decision to do what I did. It ain't God's fault that Sister Lisa made a decision to marry me. <laughs> I love you, baby. I love you so much. You don't know how I'm always using her. You don't mind, dude. Thank God. <laughs> I thank God that Sister Lisa, Sister Lisa is a wonderful woman, period. Where she's a real love, care, 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 very caring person. She told me one day, she said, You're the only person really make me upset. <laughs> I said, Oh. Like I didn't know it. We've grown. 40 years, we've grown. We've grown together. Brothers and sisters, let me, let me, let me give you some more. This is the thing that's going to be critical. As if you really want to move forward as God is pulling you forward. I want to say something. I want you to hear me. Holy Spirit, please. Life can get better than you can ask or think. Your mind is not big enough to hold God's plans for you. Your mind is not big enough to figure out God's plans for you. The way you get God's plans in your life, you have to go in the word and study and get an understanding. For scripture says, in all of your getting, get understanding. You have to get, once you get understanding, are you hearing me now? No matter what the conditions of your life is, it can turn around. But as a Christian, you need the word of God. Some people have lost hope. They don't have any hope. They don't have any hope that life can get better. You, you've gone through hell, purity, hell, and high water. But God said, I'll be with you in the water. He said, I'll be with you in the fire. See, he never left you, but now he wants to bring you out. Because you've been in it too long. It's ruining and rottening you. It's time to come out. But sometimes you can't come out by yourself. Sometimes you got to reach out and say, you know what, don't, don't, don't think that, that God will, will do anything other than what he does. Whatever somebody else already have materialistic, it's theirs. God can move on somebody's heart to, to give to you, but he don't have to. See, that's not what you mean. What you need or what we need is we need an understanding of who we are and we need to yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. To the power of the Holy Spirit. I used to think that money would really, really make me, I used to always pray to God, you know, we need money if we need faith in God is what the believer lives by. Now, since I understand that money has come. And money keeps coming. Money keeps coming. But not just money. Love keeps coming. Grace keeps coming. Mercy keeps coming. It just comes. But I had to learn that the just lives by faith. Now, when you have faith in God, this is it. I'm, I got I to I quit again. When you really have faith in God, you do it God's way. Forget about myself. Forget about what I think. Forget about, listen, listen. There's a joy that's in my soul that sometimes I break out in laughter and it seems like everything is chaotic. Because this joy, I didn't give it to myself. I, I wish you knew what I was talking about. There's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's in me. 
See, like when everything is out of balance and it won't come together, peace makes me be still and let God do the work. See, that's what he's offering with this. So that's what he's offering when he talks about this body of believers. What I need to do, what you do, what you need to do is you need to submit yourself again to God. And trust God, sometimes we want things a certain way, but we have to consider the beginning. Listen, please hear this. God is saying this. Sometimes we want things different than what they are. And we don't understand why they are in the condition that they're in. But listen, you got to consider the beginning. What happened in the beginning? Was God there in the beginning? If God wasn't there in the beginning, is it necessarily so that he's got to be there now? He's never there if you don't invite him there. So whatever happened from the beginning to the mess up, if you never go back to the beginning and say, they weren't saved when we when we started that business. They wasn't God, God wasn't in it when we started that, that God wasn't in it when when we when we started that, that business. God wasn't in it when we got married. God wasn't in it when we had children. You have to consider the beginning in order to understand where you are now. And then you can live better as a believer. You can let things go. That shouldn't have never happened in the first place. I wish somebody could hear this guy. Somebody got to setting you free right now if you could hear it. You can let it. Listen, you can't make another person something that they are not when hell has been going on. One or two things will happen. You'll go your separate ways or either you'll have to trust God to fix it. A believer trusts God to fix it if that's what God allows but God might not allow. See, some things God might not, some things God will tear down. Jesus, I'm going to tear this temple down in three days and we'll bring it back. Some things are so corrupt, so full of bitterness and resentment, so many tormented games and that God has to tear it down. But don't ever focus in on the tear down. Look at the rebuild. God can rebuild your life now if you let him. If you let him listen, now I'm going to stay with this. I, I haven't, I didn't get as far as I wanted to get, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit went as far as he wanted to go. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. This is a thought. This is a thought. Ask God for the spirit of discernment and begin to get help. Not, not, not with people so close. Some folk that, that God put on your heart that will pray for you. That can help you. Don't expect the wrong help. Expect spiritual help. I'm not talking about you uh, if you're a hustler and you come to church to hustle people financially. I ain't talking to you. Honestly. Everything in the church. Everybody, all kinds of people. But I'm talking to people who really want help where you can have your own and you can get going. You got to get out of your stubborn ways. God, God, let me, let me, I know. you got to stop being so stubborn and do it God's way. Can I tell you why God has given you this? Because he want to help you. But his word stands. His word stands. It has to be by his word. See, the help is already here. It's not a new help he's giving us. He don't have to. He's sitting back at the throne. Jesus, he said, when Jesus said it was finished, it's finished. Everything we need is in here. But we need each other. Brothers and sisters, we need each other. I ask God now to give us what we need in understanding. I'm asking God now to bring forth that unity, that understanding, that joining, that allowing this body to work and function so we can be greater, so we can overcome, so we can see deliver, so we can see healing. God has placed gifts in different places. But it's all here. It's complete. With God, there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. That's the word peace. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. It's in the body. Brothers and sisters, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you for this time that it has come. 
of him, I'm asking now that you will move in the midst of us and bring forth the body of Christ. Join us together and let us allow your spirit to operate in the midst of us for your glory and for our benefit. In Jesus' name. Now, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you, if you are saved, then that's good. But to those of you who are not, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, this message don't mean a thing. It don't mean a thing because it doesn't apply to you. The only way it can apply to you is that you've accepted Jesus Christ or you're willing to accept Jesus Christ or you're called now, you're drawn to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. Now the simplicity, God made it so easy and so simple. He didn't make it hard. He said this. He said if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, agree with God that Jesus is who God said he is, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the sealing of the Holy Spirit. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Now, confession is dealing with who Jesus is. The whole way he comes through a virgin's birth, he is God. He lived as, as a man. He went through, he suffered, he died. They put him on the cross. They beat him. They put him on the cross. They put him in the grave. He got up again. When you believe that, brothers and sisters, you have salvation and you confess, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. But one thing I like to do is I like to say, God, please forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. That's the nature. That's the flesh nature. Forgive me. Then I would say, Jesus, please come into my life. I need you to be my Lord. I need you to be my Savior. Once I ask him, I believe that he comes in. And then once he comes in, I confess, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father God, for giving me a new life, an eternal life. And then once you've done that, brothers and sisters, the Bible said that. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit. You're saved. You're saved. Saved means I have eternal life. I will be with the Lord one day through and be there throughout eternity. But brothers and sisters, if you don't do that, if you, if you don't understand that, you need to get understanding. But if you don't do it, then the body of Christ doesn't apply to you. But it does apply to those who are, who have accepted Jesus, who he is your Lord. Even though you've been a little slack, you've been a little off kilter, today I'm declaring that God is drawing you back full forth. In the name of Jesus. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When you accept Jesus, you do need to be baptized. You do need to be baptized. We can baptize you. Just let us know you want to be baptized. We'll get you baptized. We'll get you baptized. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to leave you there. You got to give your tithes and offerings. You, 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 it's necessary that. Because why do I say you got to give them? Because it belongs to God. The Bible literally says that the tithes are holy and they belong to God. The offering that, he, that, he, that is required, it, it belongs to God. He asked the question, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. How have I robbed you? In your tithe and in your offering. That's what the Lord said. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse so that I'll be meeting in my house. He said, prove me that with said love. If I won't open you the windows of heaven pour you out of blessing. Giving, brothers and sisters, has blessed our lives. That's why I teach it. Confession of Jesus Christ has blessed our lives. Understanding prayer and the need of others is blessing our lives. That's why I teach it. It works. Brothers and sisters, if it works for myself and Lisa and our children, it'll work for you. But you got to be willing to do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, so you can give your tithe online. You can bring them here. You can, you can put them in. You can call them in. I like this number, 678-661-5332. Now, i got to tell you something. This weekend is exciting for me. We're getting ready to have our family and friends day. Sister Janice, I was talking to her about it last night. She called it Plain Picnic. She said, we're having our picnic, Pastor. That's our family and friends day. Amen. They are similar, but they're not the same. What's the difference is we come in and pull from each other food and spiritual food and strength. Amen. The picnic is we'll just be coming to eat and have fun. And, and, but we're going to have fun. We're going to eat. But we're going to also, it's going to be a family and friends. We're going to have some school supplies. I believe they're going to have school supplies. But it's going to be a great event. I mean, we've got a lot of games to play. We're going we're gonna to have all the, the bouncers and we got a basketball, volleyball, any volleyball champions like I am out there, come on. We'll do the volleyball, any basket, anybody can play some basket. Don't get on the court with me if you cannot play. I don't even want you to. I've gotten a little older now, so you might stand a chance, but don't try me. I'm still good. No, I'm only joking, guys. I don't really do any of that stuff. But listen, I love you. I thank God for you. Put it on your calendar. I think we're going to be gathering about, is it 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock? 12 o'clock. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Just so. All the people that are helping us and, and, and with the cooking and all that stuff, I want you to get here about 9.30, <laughs> uh, the latest 10, and then Meltonia and your little group. We got some stuff we got to get this week, huh? 
Amen. I love you. God bless you. Listen, guys, I love you so much. Uh, again, we've got these cards. Some of them are, are for Walmart. Some of them are for Publix. If you need them, get them. But make sure you need them. Um, I don't get what I don't need. I used to get what I didn't need because I was greedy and a thief. I did. I used to just be, you know, I, did. I used to get it. I used to get it like it was there. I get it. Like, but I suffered a lot because I always needed to get it. Then I started being able to give, and then I wasn't able. I didn't need it. So listen, if you need it, don't be proud. That's what it is. That's the body of Christ. So it's here for you. I think the I think the publics are 25. I think the other ones in the in the gold are 20, and then some are 25. Some visas in there. But get them if you need them, and it'll help you with your gas, help you with your food. You need that. I think the prices are going down, but still, let's, let's make sure you're okay. Listen, I love you. I thank God for you. Is there something else you want to say? Okay. But listen, I love Hey, be blessed. Do me a favor. Be, how many people are blessed? How many people are encouraged? <laughs> I guess that's easy to say at church, huh? Well, I want you to be encouraged in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love you so much. And God loves you so much more. Sister Lisa, love you too. Be blessed in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.